Hi everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial uh, for informatics second year programming. This week we will be discussing polymorphism as well as casting. Uh, but as mentioned in class, uh, we've actually already done polymorphism. You guys just didn't know about it. Well, maybe some of you did, but most of you wouldn't have known about it. Uh, but I will show you which part of what we did last week was polymorphism and we will take that further um, and apply a bit of casting as well. Okay, so what we did last week is we had a page for which had a table of cats as well as one for a table of dogs and we went to implement uh, using our inheritance from the week before that where we had a pet base class and dog and cat derived classes we went to go and implement method for info get info and a method for walk um, in the derived classes but both of these methods let's just open the pet uh, were also defined, or both of these behaviors were also defined in the base class. The one was defined with a virtual keyword, meaning it could but did not have to be overridden in the derived class. And the other, walk, was defined as an abstract method, meaning the class was also, um, also needed to be abstract, uh, meaning that walk uh, had to be overridden in any class that derives from pet. We then went ahead and did that. So we wrote, uh, we overrode to get info in dog, uh, where if it was a guiding dog, it would say is also a guiding dog. Otherwise it would say has no extra skill. And for walk, it would just return, I love it, let's do this. Uh, for the cat view model, it also implemented those methods uh, with its own uh, details, so it's, uh, the way it carried out these uh, methods were slightly different. And if you remember from class, that is exactly what polymorphism is. Polymorphism is the same behavior with different implementations. So if we go back to this class, get info uh, is a type, is a behavior, right? So what pet is basically saying is that all pets has the behavior get info, right? And all pets has the behavior, um, all pets have the behavior walk. Um, what it does with the abstract keyword is by is basically saying all pets have the behavior walk, but I don't know anything about its implementation. Therefore, the derived classes have to go ahead and implement it themselves. And for the vert, where you use the virtual keyword, it says, again, all, all pets have the behavior get info. Um, I know a little bit about it, so I'm going to provide this default implementation, but the derived classes are allowed to go ahead and provide their own implementation for it as well. But the bottom line is that different implementations can be provided for these same behaviors okay so polymorphism talks about having one interface but multiple implementations so an interface refers to basically this line or this line so an interface tells you okay listen we have a modifier we've got the return type we've got the name of the method and we've got the parameters that the function takes that's the interface. The implementation is a part that's in the curly brackets. Okay. So again, here we have interfaces. We know that every pet has get info and we know that every pet has walk, but the different types of pet could have different implementations. So when you call get info for cat, this will be called. And when you call get info for dog, this code will execute. Okay, so we already did polymorphism last week. This is just uh, the theory behind that. Okay, so what we actually want to go ahead and do uh, today is to 
instead of having a table for cats and a separate table for dogs I actually want to use this uh, hello page uh, to just embed a single table with cats and dogs in one so I'm going to remove this names list and replace this with a table that has um, basically a list of pets okay so let's go ahead and do that so first of all we go to index.cshml under the hello um, view and we go ahead and just remove that and we want to say okay at first we want to use the namespace uh, view models because we're going to use multiple view models in here so it's hello mbc dot view models and we want to go and say at model is a list of pet no that's the wrong one a list of pet okay and then we basically want to have more or less the same table as cat except that sorry as cat except that we're going to add to it so i'm just going to copy this to make it easier so this is our index under hello and the title will be my pets or let's call it the pets page this title will be or the heading will be my pets and okay so remember that we want we are now getting a list of pets in here and we want to handle that list of pets in here so we want to have a column for name age and uh, age name and breed because we know every pet has an age name and breed um, then we want to have a column for type so in this column we can say this pet is type cat or this pet is type dog and then I want a column for unique uh, attribute and the purpose of this column is to show so cat has a unique attribute number of lives and dog has a unique attribute um, is guiding dog and I actually want to um, display whatever you the value of the unique attribute of the specific type of pet in this column and then we want to go ahead and still show info and still show walk so for now I'm just going to add basically for every row uh, two empty columns here and we must now remember that model is in fact a list of pets and we can then say this is for variable pet in model um, and we just change just to make sense of this um, and everything should work as expected in terms of the view I will show you now um, how this get info and walk still works that's the idea of accessing uh, the implementation defined in a derived class through the base class uh, but before we get there I just want to go ahead and update the controller because obviously the view won't work if we do nothing to the controller so um, what I want to do in the controller is I want to define a list of pets okay pets hasn't been defined yet so we need to go ahead and include it so we need the using hello mbc dot view models up there so we define a new list of pets okay and then we want to go ahead and add a whole range of pets uh, into this list so I'm just gonna go to the cat controller and copy what I did there uh, 
as well as the dog controller. And of course, so these are just to instantiate a number of cats and dogs, right? And of course, these lists, dog view models and cats don't exist. So we have to replace them all with pets. Now the cool thing is because a cat view model object is of type pet, right? Therefore you can add a cat view model object to the list of pets since cat inherits from pet okay so this is one of the cool things of of inheritance um, in that you can add derived classes to lists uh, which are referenced as the base class so you've got a list of pets and you can add cats and dogs to that list okay so if we just go ahead and change all of these to the list of pets you'll see that all of them work perfectly well no syntax errors um, again I'm just gonna randomize this a bit so that we have like a cat and then a dog and then maybe two cats again so we've got cat one dog one cat two and three dog two so yeah, cat one, dog one, cat two and three, dog two and three, cat four uh, and dog four. It doesn't really matter what the order is, it's just to make it random a bit. Um, and if we now go ahead and run this, wait, I just got something. Uh, we must remember to return the model. So remember our model is a list of pets, but I need to return that model to the view. So if we now click on hello, there's our list. So as you can see, um, we have a list of pets. Uh, we didn't have to distinguish that, okay, we've got one list of cats and one list of dogs and we handle those as two separate lists. We only needed to create one list of pets um, the age, name and breed were, was dealt with pretty easily because these are shared, um, uh, shared data members. Um, and info and walk, um, this is actually the interesting part and this is where you see polymorphism in action, is that um, the, the correct get info implementation and the correct walk implementation is called uh, from the correct derived class implementation. Um, so C Sharp does that for you automatically. Um, so here we have Pixie Persian and C Sharp automatically figures out this is a cat object and um, therefore it calls the correct uh, get info function. And I can prove that to you. So if we go to get info of the cat, here we have it base dot get info plus number of lives left okay so you can clearly see that this line was executed in the cat view model so even though this is a list list of pets um, the get info behavior was accessed through the base class but the correct implementation uh, was lying in the derived class and that was the one that was executed okay and this is polymorphism in action the um, specific or unique implementation of a generic behavior was carried out here and the same thing for walk uh, I love it let's do it is defined in the dog class while no human will force me to walk is defined in the cat class and even though this is a generic list of pets, the, depending on the type of pet, it automatically calls the correct walk function. Okay, but now we still have two blank columns. We've got the type column that we want to fill up and the unique attribute column. All right, so let's just go to our, our um, view. And here we have our two columns. Uh, 
So what we can do for the first one is we want to display the type um, and what I just want to demonstrate here to you is two utilities in C Sharp that you can use when you're working with types and you want to understand what specific class a particular object is from. So from this code we can't tell whether pet will be a cat or a dog. We just know this is a generic list of pets. Okay, so we can say if uh, pet dot get type. Okay, so this is utility number one. Okay, um, this get type will return the type of object pet is. So the actual instance. So remember when we instantiated this in the controller. We instantiated it either as a cat view model or a dog view model, and then when you call this get type, it will return uh, the type you instantiate this object as. Um, and then we want to test if type of equals um, cat view model. Okay, so the type of um, basically you use when you want to compare the value returned from get type to a particular data type. Um, and now we have a notation. So this is just a text output. So if you do at colon, then you can put any text and it will just output that text into the HTML. So it will embed the, the text cat here in the TD. And we want to say else at colon dog right and I for the unique attribute we also want to do something that's unique uh, if it's like figure out is it a cat or is it a dog and if it's a cat we want to do something and if it's a dog we want to do something differently right and since we're not working through uh, generic uh, methods or behaviors like get info and walk we actually want to access attributes directly we need this whole um, pet.get type type implementation um, all right so if it's a cat uh, this is where the casting comes in if it's a cat i want to cast this pet object to a cat so that i can access its unique attributes okay so i'm gonna declare a new cat view model my cat and what I'm going to do is actually cast it so the way you cast it is by putting brackets and the type of object you want to cast it to and um, the object that you actually want to cast and in this way this pet object has been converted or cast to a cat object and you can then use it from this point forward as a cat object um, and I want to output a span. The reason I use span is because span is an inline object. You'll remember from our HTML lectures. And I then want to use, uh, okay, first I want to say number of lives. And then I want to say at my cat dot number of lives. Okay. Now we want to do the same for dog, so um, we cast, if it's a dog, then we cast it to a dog, so this pet will then from this point be handled, well, this my dog will allow us to handle this as a dog object. Um, then we say my dog dot is guiding dog and there we go right let's run this and there you have it so our two columns have been filled up for every uh, pet in the pet list uh, it first of all um, displays the age name and breed easily like we said earlier that it just gets from the derive from the base class easily um, the inf get info and walk methods um, it accesses through the base class but thanks to polymorphism it accesses the correct uh, specific implementation 
of these methods. And then finally, what we did is in the type, it shows that if the type of pet is a cat, then it shows the cat. Um, and if it's a dog, it shows that it's a dog. And it also shows the unique attributes. Um, and the way we could do these unique attributes is to actually use casting to, to cast it, to basically go from an abstract class to a more concrete class. And we use casting to do so. And that way we could access the unique attributes. All right. Um, I hope this is clear to you and this sheds some light on the usefulness of polymorphism and casting. And that's it for this tutorial. See you next time. Bye.